Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, our guest today is political historian and journalist Steve Flowers. Also, the V Team takes a look at the Republican landslide. And is Mike Hubbard still king of Goat Hill? Or will Governor Bentley come in and snatch his crown? All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. The Voice of Alabama Politics with your host, Bill Brett, and the V Team with Claire Austin, Susan Britt, Jack Campbell, Baron Coleman, Charlana Spencer, and special reports with Jonathan Barbie. Now, the number one political show in Alabama, The V. Welcome to the Voice of Alabama Politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the VT. Welcome all. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you here again, Susan. Nice to be here. We always get nice comments when you're on the show. You're not as mean as the rest of us. <laughs> no, they just, you know, they don't know me very well then. <laughs> it was a crazy night. The elections, where there were supposed to be no surprises, did hold some very hidden surprises. What's your take on that, Baron? Well, I mean, I think overall the Republican Party had an outstanding night, top to bottom, not just locally or statewide, I mean nationally. Right. Mm -hmm. had it, just, it was a colossal wave, similar to the colossal wave of 2010. It, it, it mirrored it in many ways. I think, uh, number one, it means Barack Obama is still very unpopular. Uh, two, I think we've entered a new realm of Alabama politics. There is, if the Roger Bedford race holds up and he does end up losing, I think we're down to one white Democrat in the entire Alabama Senate. Yeah. Would be correct. Which means we essentially, and there are no female Republicans in the Alabama Senate. I think yeah. we're probably in a realm, in a world now where we have a white party and a black party in Alabama. The white party is the Republican Party, the black party is the Democratic Party, and there, there are very few people who are not going to fit into one of those categories. Susan, is that really good for our state? I don't really think so, but the, when the Republicans did the reapportionment, they designed it that way. So you've got black Democrats and white Republicans. Um, you know, I always think a, a little bit of a balance is a good thing. I don't think too much of it, uh, the same is always good. We don't really have equal representation, do we, Jack? Not really, not anymore. But <clears throat> that's like Susan said, when... When the new district lines were drawn, it was to preserve seats of incumbents. Both, you know, the, the, the African-American uh, Democrats wanted to protect their seats. The white Republicans wanted to protect their seats. And this is the result is spirited primaries and dull general elections. Mm -hmm. I feel like somewhere in the back of my mind that we, we, we're actually going backwards, though. You know, we're not being inclusive. We're not representing all the people. I mean, as a woman, you don't even have any, you have one woman in, in the Senate, basically, that, that, that is a white woman. That's and she's it. an independent because Mike Hubbard kicked her out of the party. Exactly. And that's I mean, how does that Smith. make you feel? <laughs> that makes me feel unrepresented. And, and Tammy Irons, who was a white Democrat, kind of got drawn out of the, of the legislature. Did. In fact, I think that may be one of the things that helped beat Roger Bedford is Tammy Irons felt betrayed, and the word on the streets is, she was helping uh, Roger Bedford's opponent, Dr. Studs. You know, no surprise that Robert Bentley was reelected as governor. I think there are people that think that uh, Parker Griffith kind of drug the whole situation down. Baron, you've had some thoughts on that, haven't you? I, I have. I, I think Parker Griffith was the death knell to the Democratic ticket this year. Had Robert Bentley been allowed to run unopposed, he wouldn't have spent five or six million dollars. He wouldn't have energized Republicans in every nook and cranny of the entire state. He was what carried the day for everybody. The Alabama Republican Party spent very little money. The interest group spent some, but not a ton. Robert Bentley was who won all those races. Every single legislator in the state of Alabama who's a Republican should wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and say, Whew, I'm thankful for Robert Bentley. That's why I'm here today. Yeah, his coattails were much bigger than Bob Riley's ever were. Well, Bentley is a well, well-respected governor. He's a, beloved by most everyone. 
No surprises in D.C. as far as our, our caucus goes, was there, Susan? Not one. Not one. I mean, everybody just sailed right to re-election. Uh, but the interesting thing is that states all across the nation, which have been traditionally blue states, were electing Republicans, which goes to show you that a lot of folks in the country are waking up to what we already knew, that Obama's a failure. You have, you have Republican governors now in Maryland, Massachusetts, and Illinois. Let that sink in. That's how big of the wave was. And left. kept John Kasich in Ohio by yeah. a big margin. I mean, the map looked like a bloodbath <laughs> by the end of the evening. It did. I mean, we got a few little blue states here and there dotting, but it was all red. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it just goes to show you that the next two years, people are out. I think, you know, things can change in two years when Obama's not at the top of the ticket. Uh, I don't think anything will change in Alabama. I mean, I, I woke up surprised again yesterday or, or, or last week to not find Obama anywhere in office in Alabama. <laughs> I think a team, lot of people were surprised he wasn't you know, on the ballot. I'm pretty sure he was in bed with half the Democrats. <laughs> the Republicans have a huge challenge, though, ahead with, the, with our state financial woes. And this will be a true test of leadership the next four years. You know, one of the races that was hotly contested, probably the most hotly contested, was the Luther Strange... Joe Hubbard race. Uh, both did a, uh, what turned out to be an amazing job. It just didn't work out for Joe Hubbard, but he's a, he's a young man with a career ahead of him. He ran a spirited campaign. Jonathan Barbie was there with Luther Strange. Jonathan, tell us what happened. Just a few short weeks ago, tensions were high in the race for the Alabama Attorney General's office. As incumbent Luther Strange battled it out with State Representative Joe Hubbard, the polls were close, but tonight, in Luther Strange's victory speech, he thanks the people of Alabama. Finally, I want to thank the voters of Alabama for giving me this honor. It's the highest honor I could possibly enjoy to be the Attorney General of this great state. And to be honored with four more years means more than I can possibly tell you. And I want to thank them because the voters, as I always felt like they would, looked at the issues. One of those issues was the indictment of Speaker of the House Mike Hubbard just a few weeks ago. Strange says he has received a lot of positive feedback from voters, and they are confident in his role as Attorney General. From what I heard just on the street from the average man and woman, they just appreciated the fact that I was doing my job without regard to politics, without regard uh, to the laws I particularly like or don't like. That's not really my role. It's just to enforce the laws and the Constitution, do it fairly, uh, and respect everybody, uh, and uh, we've tried to do that, and I think the voters recognized it. Attorney General Luther Strange calls tonight's win a victory for the people of Alabama as he happily thanks his family and his friends for being here, and he rejoices on stage by giving both his sons a high five. Reporting from the Luther Strange camp in Homewood, Alabama, I'm Jonathan Barbie for the Voice of Alabama Politics. Luther ran a statesmanlike campaign to a large degree. He stayed the course. People had lots of advice. He didn't take it. I, I think he, he knew what he was doing. We, we questioned him, but he won, didn't he, Susan? He did. There was a lot of money spent in that race, too. I mean, a lot of money. Um, but it, obviously, you know, I didn't, I didn't see where I thought Luther was actually going to be able to pull it out there for a while because there wasn't enough of a presence, but he did. The telling thing to me was that the Business Council of Alabama only gave Luther 5000 Well, and... That's nothing. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, with Billy Canary's name being tacked on to those indictments, as one might call him an unindicted co-conspirator, I think that's why I didn't give him any money, maybe, Jack. Maybe, maybe. Well, why else would you do it? Baron? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to speak to Billy Canary and Luther Strange's <laughs> woes. What I will say about that is they were both dogged campaigners. It was yeah. a very spirited race. Uh, I think the Republican wave, the nationwide wave, was just more than any Democrat could possibly overcome this year at all. I agree. We're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Our guest today is Steve Flowers. Stay tuned. Watching The V. The V is sponsored by Spot On Strategies Group. I teach. I touch the future. I am AEA. I keep the school clean every day for your children. I am AEA. Congratulations on your scholarship. I help children make choices for college and careers. I am AEA. We are AEA.
Welcome to Alabama's newest entertainment destination, Wind Creek Wetumpka, the perfect escape for date night, a getaway with your friends, or a relaxing poolside cocktail. Whether it's a day trip to enjoy the best steak in Alabama or a romantic weekend, the finest Southern hospitality is just a short drive away. Wind Creek Wetumpka, find your winning moment. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Our guest today is Steve Flowers, television personality, political historian, and all-around great guy and thank journalist. You. Yeah, thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. I look forward to being on your show every time. Y'all have a great show. I enjoy watching it every week. Well, you know, you've been one of my favorites for years. We were talking off the set that we've known each other for a number of years, and you came to visit a newspaper we used to have up in St. Clair County, and that's how we got to know each other. Well, y'all carried my column, and... Uh, and uh, I enjoy seeing everybody about once a year, two years, especially that part of the state in the fall. It's yeah. the prettiest part of the state in the fall. I love to try to get up in Sand Mountain. I spoke to the Albert Road, Albertville Rotary Club the other day, and uh, it was already leaves were already turning. That's the prettiest part of Alabama. It's beautiful. As you predicted, pretty dull race, uh, pretty dull election. Not much happened. There were a couple of surprises, but what's your – General takeaway, what, what should we think about this? Well, you know, I, I've been following this stuff a long time, and uh, I've never seen this dull or uneventful uh, gubernatorial year. You know, historically, Bill, in Alabama politics, more Alabamians have voted in the governor's race than presidentially. That's not like most of the rest of the country. Uh, most people vote more in presidential years, and 60% in presidential years, 40% in midterm elections nationwide. But Alabamians have always liked the governor's race, but in the last 20 years, the numbers have fallen down. But the reason it was such a low turnout this year and such a low event was the popularity of Governor Bentley. Uh, that's the best race every four years, and uh, his numbers were 20 points starting out, and they remained 20 points, and they won by 24 points. And, you know, he's just a popular incumbent governor. And I use the word incumbent, and I emphasize that because, as you know, being an incumbent has inherent tremendous advantages. You raise all the money, you've got right. name ID, and so you couple that, the fact he's popular, he's a Republican, he's an incumbent, and then the people below him, the constitutional officers, the four or five constitutional officers, had the same thing, a popular incumbency. So there's just no top of the ballot to draw attention. We had some good local races around the state, and a lot of the special interest money was put into the Senate races around the state, which made them competitive. Uh, but the governor being so popular and having such a cakewalk election brought the numbers down uh, and the interest down. You know, it, it's uh, something that was mentioned several times over the last few days is that Bentley now has a mandate and nothing to lose but to, to cement his legacy. Do you have any idea, will he be different this four years or will we see him be more aggressive? Or That is an excellent question. I, I think he, sh he will move to the center a little bit and try to get more things accomplished. He was more of a caretaker, as you know. He's a good man, didn't try to make any waves, and uh, pretty much let the Speaker and the President pro tem of the Senate run the show uh, and take all the power, if you will. Uh, he's got to make some decisions. He's got to come forward with some initiatives. Uh, otherwise, he, he will leave no legacy. Uh, I, I like Governor Bentley. I think he's a good man. I think everybody in the state does. But he, he's got to... And he could take some initiative. He could take some, some power in the legislature. The governor really has a lot of power. They just, unless they use it, it doesn't matter, right? He has not used it in yeah. the first four years. And, he, and he, he needs to usurp some of the power that the, the leadership in the legislature has usurped over the last four years. You know, in a race that we watched fairly close because of the 23 uh, indictments for public corruption was the race down in Auburn with Mike, Speaker Mike Hubbard. Uh, the woman that ran against him was a, a black professor who had dreadlocks. And she still, I mean, while he won pretty big, she still got a significant amount of votes. I mean, uh, there were Republicans who were telling me, gosh, if you'd had a, a white, you know, uh, Democrat run against him, it would have been real, real close. Well, Lee County is one of the most Republican candidates in the state. 
Uh, in matter of fact, in 1982, it was one of three counties that Emory Farmer carried for governor. So it's, it's just a Republican stronghold, and I don't think anybody who ran as a Republican, I wouldn't read more into his popularity because he won. Uh, that is going to be the next event that those of, of us who follow Alabama politics will be following. There's more suspense and interest over the next month, six weeks before the organizational session in mid-January, which is right here on us. We get into the holiday season. Oh, sure. But there's going to be jockeying for that speaker's job, and that's going to be the, the, the race to follow now, yeah. is, is that race. Luther Strange versus Joe Hubbard. Uh, you know, that was closed for a while. Ended up not being close at all. But what was your take on that race? You know, going into that race, I had said Luther Strange is probably going to be through politically because he's going to run so poorly. I've changed my whole thought process on that. His victory last night, to me, uh, was the most impressive victory on, uh, of, of all the things. Bentley had an impressive victory, but it was expected. you got to figure, here's a guy who had $2 million dollars spent against him by the Indian casinos, uh, directly given to Hubbard. Uh, and he, he overcame that, got 56, 57 percent of the vote. And uh, he was poised. And he did a good job in his victory uh, celebration. And, uh, you know, that was, to overcome that was a pretty good, pretty good race, I think. I, I think, he's, I think he's, he's alive and well, doing well. And that's a great job to run for, for, for office in. Yeah. Attorney General, you can prosecute people. You can choose not to prosecute them. You know, you're always popular to prosecute criminals. And the big thing is, Bill, eventually during the next four years, we're going to get some money from BP. And he can claim credit for that. And, um, and that's going to maybe the manna from heaven that saves the general fund budget. Well, you and I, it's never too early to look down the road, look into the crystal ball. We've got about a minute left. But, you know, we're going to have a bunch of people running for governor. Uh, right now, looking way down the road in voodoo country, who do you think the top players are? You know, that is going to be the best question. We'll, you and I will have fun following over the four years. And i give you an example. As I told you earlier, I was speaking to the Albertville Rotary Club uh, last week, and uh, the editor of the paper there, Ben Charette, and the Sam Mountain Reporter said, look who was here before you the week before. The two people before me were Tommy Battle, the mayor of Huntsville, and Walt Maddox, the mayor of Tuscaloosa. Well, they weren't in Albertville just for the fun of it. Those right. two guys running for governor. As dull as this year was, Bill, we're going to have a great 2018, and they're going to start jockeying. We're going to have four or five mayors. We're going to have two or three secondary office holders. We're going to have legislators. And then the thing about it, we got some wild cards out there that none of us have ever heard of that maybe have sold a barbell company and decided they want to run for governor. Well, it's going to be interesting. It'll give us some, a reason to be on the air and in print, right? It was dull this time, but 2018 will be a fun year. Steve? Thank you for your service to the state. Thank you for your writing, your television show, your radio show. You keep us so informed. We appreciate all you do. Thank you, Bill. Enjoyed it. Our guest today has been Steve Flowers. You're watching The V. We'll be right back with more commentary from the VT. The V is sponsored by MediaWorks Communications, quality video production and marketing services. The Locker Room, Fine Men's Clothing. I make sure to get your kids to school and home safe every day. I am AEA. I make sure your child receives a healthy meal each day. I am AEA. Thank you AEA for protecting our public schools and our futures. We are It's time to take a road trip. In Alabama, the road and the restaurants are calling. We've elevated barbecue to an art form. A meat masterpiece. Fine dining your thing? National awards are putting us on the map. Because everything's fresh and local. And if you like your dinner with a view, well, you can't beat this. Alabama has a road trip with your name on it. Which one you gonna take?
Welcome back to the Voice of Alabama Politics. Claire, it's nice to have you here this Sunday morning. I'm glad to be yes. here with y'all. I know I'm a little bit later than usual, but okay. A beautiful red dress for a red state, red right? State. For a red state and the elections are over and we're a red state. I mean, it was really a landslide and I think a lot of that had to do with Governor Bentley, don't you? Absolutely. He was a very strong force for the top of the ticket. And I'm just very thrilled for the whole, for particularly for the U.S. Congress for the Senate. That's very exciting, particularly for us in Alabama. One of the things that I have wondered and, and spoken with a lot of people about, will Bentley now grab the power that other governors have, or is Mike Hubbard going to continue to be the king of Goat Hill? What, what do you think, Barron? He, he has the opening with the Mike Hubbard indictments. The door is open. I don't know if Governor Bentley has... The, the, the mentality, the personality to kick down a door and run in and beat his chest. If he does, now's the time to do it. I think he can do it. I think he will gain the respect of people. I think there are a lot of people who won very close races, Will Ainsworth and others uh, in the House. I think Terry Collins was boosted by, um, by Bentley. These are people who owe, I think, the next four years of their career to Governor Bentley being so strong. Jack, what do you think about that? I agree. I think his coattails were, were, were huge, as, as we talked about earlier. And I, and I think that uh, I think he might draw the line in the sand. I, I mean, I know Robert Bentley pretty well, and, and he'll take only so much. He kind of was on the sidelines these first four years. But with the mandate he got Tuesday night, I think he's in a great position to assert real strength. You know, when we interviewed him uh, earlier in the year, he told me he wanted to be known as the – greatest governor that Alabama had ever had, not because of his personal greatness, but what he did for the people. He has an opportunity, Claire. Will he grab it? Well, he needs to take charge. He needs to take the reins and move forward. I think he's got the former Speaker of the House, Seth Hammett, there, which I think is a bright spot. That's great for him to be there. He can really give the governor a lot of ideas and support, and he is very well respected in the legislative process. And I know the governor is capable of doing it, and the People of this state gave him a strong mandate, and I think that the leadership in the House or the current speaker is weakened, and I would think that every House member that's been elected can really see that. I know they're trying to do this PR job 124 hours of the day, but that is just not reality when you've got 23 counts. Well, if, if I were Governor Bentley, I'd pick up the phone and call every Republican in the House and Senate and go, uh, my name's Robert Bentley, I just won in a landslide. You don't go with me? You don't go. I mean, I would make it very clear that I am the top dog because Bentley can be that. Yeah, and you would think that a lot of these people come in saying, you know, I don't want to vote or cast a vote for a speaker that is currently convicted. I uh, mean, he's currently has these in 23 indictments, excuse me. Yeah, I agree. Well, speaking about those indictments, uh, the spin was just out of control on the evening of the election. Jack, I mean, have you ever seen anything like well, that? Well, the most, the most disturbing thing to me was Mark White's public statement that the OA News printed that, that Lee County has the best jury in the, in, in the state. If that isn't salting the jury pool, I've never seen it. And I don't know why the Bar Association doesn't look into it, because to me that was way over the top. Aaron, there's, lo there's laws that could be broken by these types of comments, aren't Th there? There are, and, and I think it would be worth perhaps a motion to the judge asking Mark White, at the very least, to refrain from making comments about what wonderful juries Lee County has. Um, but, but, but beyond that, I mean, if you look at the practical aspects of, of someone making the decision whether or not to vote for Mike Hubbard for Speaker of the House, in four years, it's possible, maybe even likely, that he's going to be perhaps in prison. Do you want your political opponent four years from now saying, that guy voted for a felon for Speaker of the House after he knew? After he knew. Well, well and that's a good point, isn't it? Very Claire? valid point. Uh, yeah, that, I agree with you. You could run a Republican against that Republican with that one issue, couldn't you, Claire? Absolutely. People, yeah, you, you, hooked your, you hooked your wagon to the wrong horse. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, one of the things we were talking about, you know, they, he got out there and said, well, you know, they, they, they rejected the Barrymore... Uh, indictments, they're going to reject my These are apples and eggs, aren't they, Barron? They they're are. Just totally I mean, it's, it's totally different. What happened to Barry Moore is done, it's over, has nothing to do with what's going to happen to Mike Hubbard down and the road. I, and I wonder if Luther Strange is going to put the pedal to the metal now that he got a pretty good mandate himself right. 
And, uh, well, and truthfully, there's nothing in the law that says you can't unrecuse yourself as the attorney general. Right, right. He, he could unrecuse himself tomorrow, get his hands dirty, and say, all right, boys, let's do it. Well, now, you know, I've, you, I've heard he, he did give Matt Hart and them some more resources. We've yeah. heard that. And then if you watched his um, speech on election night, he even talked about the fact that he recused himself and he gave these people full authority to fight public corruption, the white-collar crime. He's going to do that. The people of this state expect that. Well, you know, one other thing I want to go back to, we, we did an article this week at alreporter.com where we showed that Article 25 and 26 of the U.S. House Republican Caucus says if you are indicted, just indicted, you must step down. Why don't we have that here, Jack? Why do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not known for our greatest ethic laws. In, yeah, I was going to say, America. how about those really tough ethics laws that they passed on the eve four years ago? But Claire, yeah. Republicans, the party of law and order. This is, this is not yeah. law and order, is it? Well, yeah, I'm not going to say the Republican Party. It's just the leadership at the time and the former governor. They're the ones that came in and railroaded and did all this, you know, on the hills prior to Governor Bentley taking office, and it was in bad taste to not let the governor that was elected to handle these matters. Well, it's all been about the Rileys and the Hubbards uh, since 2010, at least. You know, well, or, or 2002. Before, 2002, yeah, it really and if, has if been. And if some of the people named in the indictments who maybe end up being the Hatfields and the McCoys well, at you the know, end that, of the day. That's interesting, though. How many of these people you think are going to stay pat for, for Hubbard? I mean, some of them are going to roll, don't you think? I don't think any would go down for him. No, I don't think anyone would bite a bullet. No, I don't think so. Uh, Barry Moore was the best chance he had for someone to go down for him. I think Barry Moore sat on information he knew. This is just my opinion. I think he sat on information he knew that was damaging to Mike, and he got away with it. I don't think anyone else is going to take that risk. You think Billy Canary or, uh, or even Bob Riley or Minda Riley is going to take a pen prick for, for No, I think the last name Canary tell, says it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's certainly hope so. I think the more that roll on, of course, if, if, if they drag a – the governor down there and have Governor Bentley testify against Mike, I think he's toast. Yeah, you talk about a zoo. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the thing that I keep sitting here reflecting about over the past months, and we all talked about this earlier, is this poisoning of the jury pool over yeah. there in Lee County. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a concerted, aggressive PR campaign that Mark White and Hubbard and all of them are doing. And if you sat around in the Central Alabama TV market and watched it election night, it was unreal. We're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching The Voice of Alabama Politics. You can catch us every day at alreporter.com and every Sunday on your ABC affiliate throughout the state. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.